Welcome to this issue of the China Brief. Today is March 28, 2023. Here at the China Brief, we bring you the latest news on China's politics, economy, and society from global media sources and exclusive expert analysis. If you find our content helpful, please subscribe to our newsletter. And here's today's exclusive insight. Escape and Outlaws in Zhejiang's Mountainous Regions In Zhejiang's mountainous regions, transportation was arduous during the anti-Japanese war. Although the Japanese invaded Zhejiang, many areas remained untouched due to their remote locations. Zhejiang has a long-standing history of banditry. The famed Japanese pirates during the Ming Dynasty were challenged by the equally formidable Qi family army, made up of Zhejiang people, especially the Iwu people. The Qi family army, also known as the Iwu army, also fought against their fellow Zhejiang people. In China's 2,000-year history, calamities, banditry, military brutality, natural and man-made disasters have resulted in a population decline of 50% or more every 100 to 200 years. Under such calamitous conditions, Zhejiang's mountainous regions became a refuge for refugees. The Suyu troops, the Communist Party's most capable fighting force, were active in Zhejiang's mountainous regions. Zhejiang's mountainous regions have a history of harboring many Robin Hoods of their times. Even during Mao's era, many Zhejiang counties had annual incidents of armed clashes, resulting in fatalities. Disputes over water usage between upstream and downstream villages escalated to fights. Yang Naiwa's case, one of the top ten injustices of the Qing dynasty, is well known, and they were from Zhejiang. Despite suffering injustice, Yang Naiwa refused to give up and persisted in filing a complaint, refusing to admit guilt until he finally turned the case around. People from Zhejiang seem have a penchant for litigation, with a period in the Qing dynasty specifically restricting them from petitioning in Beijing as the central government could not handle their civil disputes. This is the fourth in a series on Zhejiang, Zhejiang people, and Zhejiang economy by Zhejiang researcher Yi Feng. Alibaba splits into six units, plans new IPOs in major overhaul. Bloomberg Alibaba is splitting its $220 billion company into six main units, each with their own CEOs, and plans to explore initial public offerings for each unit. This is the biggest overhaul for the Chinese e-commerce company since its inception over two decades ago. The move is rare for major Chinese tech companies, which usually keep most of their operations under one roof but it is a signal that Alibaba is ready to tap investors and public markets after losing more than $500 billion in value due to the Xi Jinping administration's clampdown on internet spheres. Despite creating a half-dozen business lines, Alibaba has reaffirmed its cost-cutting to shore up the bottom line. China boosts lending to struggling belt and road borrowers. Wall Street Journal China has provided more than $230 billion in emergency support in the past decade to foreign governments and central banks through new loans, rollovers of old loans, and currency swap agreements with the People's Bank of China, according to research by the World Bank. This assistance, which researchers describe as bailouts along the Belt and Road, has steadily grown in recent years as debt problems in low- and middle-income countries have worsened. China's emergency support for borrowers reached $40 billion in 2021, up 32 percent from 2020, and more than 40 times the amount of similar aid extended in 2011. The new study warns that China's willingness to lend more to struggling borrowers risks prolonging their difficulties by avoiding the need for painful economic changes. For chipmakers, a choice between the U.S. and China looms. Wall Street Journal Semiconductor companies may have to choose between expanding in the U.S. or preserving their ability to expand in China if they seek federal grants under the CHIPS Act. The Biden administration has proposed new rules restricting chip companies from operating in China and other countries of concern if they accept taxpayer funding. The restrictions, known as China guardrails, 
are tougher than expected, especially for East Asian companies with significant operations in China. Samsung, SK Hynix, and TSMC are among these companies. The proposed rules cover a 10-year period, allowing companies to adjust their long-term China strategy. China's cities are buried in debt, but they keep shoveling it on. New York Times China's aggressive push for economic growth has led to local governments taking on additional debt, even as many are already in fiscal disarray. Many cities are cutting public services and benefits as they struggle to find funds for new infrastructure projects and service interest on old debts. For instance, over 20 towns and cities shut down bus services because local governments failed to provide operating funds, while Wuhan and other cities cut health insurance. Others have cut the pay and support of government workers, heating subsidies for natural gas during the winter, and pensions. Between zero-COVID policy, businesses paying fewer taxes, and property developers reluctant to buy land, China's local governments are increasingly in trouble. For decades, they appeared to have unlimited resources to binge-build airports, roads, and industrial parks, many of which were funded by selling land. But now less income from property sales is causing revenue shortfalls, with land sales expected to fall even further this year, just as the pandemic continues. Despite this, state media is full of breathless reports about all new projects, but the governments don't have the funds to support them. China's political system also exacerbates the matter, with short-term goals being sought by local governments at the cost of financial and human expense. Local leaders are interested in infrastructure projects because their economic payoff, while minimal, is immediate, people get construction jobs, and companies get building contracts. New high-speed railways and urban beautification projects, for example, could be seen as vanity projects that improve the perceived quality of the area while essential services like transportation and welfare languish. China's finances are increasingly delicate, and many officials are worried that China could suffer an unprecedented financial crisis as they have increased their indebtedness and doubled down on the same old growth narrative. New Zealand opened to non-nuclear talks with AUKUS, minister says. Bloomberg New Zealand is considering participating in the second pillar of the AUKUS Security Partnership, which includes quantum computing and other technology sharing. This is despite the country having a nuclear-free policy and having previously said it has no intention of becoming a full member of the pact. Defense Minister Andrew Little said New Zealand had been offered the opportunity to talk about participating in this aspect of AUKUS and would be willing to explore it. However, Prime Minister Chris Hipkins said the country will not participate in the nuclear submarines aspect of AUKUS. Chang'an, Cherry, Dongfeng Motor joined Tesla's China price war. Saishin China's car market, the largest in the world, is being shaken up by a harsh price war that's pitting makers of electric vehicles, EVs, against those producing fossil fuel-run cars. The slowdown in China's overall auto sales, which are expected to contract for a second straight year, has led to a frenzy of discounts and subsidies from companies like Tesla, Expom, Neo, and Volkswagen, which are all hope to catch a greater share of the market. China has encouraged greater EV adoption partly by offering subsidies and discounts, however, these have been cut over the years as the government seeks to make the sector more self-reliant, while also cracking down on cheaters in the scheme. U.S. elector car maker Tesla, which sells cars worth more than 300,000 renminbi, $42,637, in China, last year, became the first foreign automaker to wholly own a factory in the country to reduce shipping costs and tariffs on its products. Competition in China's automobile market is brutal, with Chinese carmakers struggling to survive due to a deep industry downturn. Demand for cars slowed last year as the economy cooled amid a trade war with the U.S., while the growth of car hailing services also crimped private sales volumes. China's domestic passenger car sales fell 10.3% last year to 21.44 million units, 
extending the year-on-year -year decline to a second year, data from the China Passenger Car Association showed. What we learned from China's tech earnings, from Alibaba to Tencent. Bloomberg China's three major tech firms, Baidu, Alibaba, and Tencent, all posted Q4 2022 earnings above analysts' forecasts amid a recovery in advertising, leading to a jump in share prices since the reports were released, and Lenovo led China's tech gains after its earnings results. However, Alibaba disappointed investors with vague guidance, and Meituan fell, despite sales soaring as traders focused on its lower margin outlook. The Hang Seng Tech Index members have gained 4% on average. Among the 19 Hang Seng Tech companies that have reported sales, 8 achieved better-than-expected results, 7 heard inline revenue, and 4 missed estimates, according to Bloomberg data. As public pressures from COVID-19 restrictions ease and Beijing relaxes its regulatory headwinds, a re-rating of valuations becomes more likely. JP Morgan's analyst Alex Yao expects the sector's valuation to increase due to Beijing's pro-growth policies and declining risks of American depository receipt delisting. Investors are cautiously optimistic, with key tech revenue pillars reaching maturity and still ample opportunities for long-term, sustainable growth. U.S. regulator sues crypto giant Binance, CEO Changpeng Zhao. DW the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, CFTC, filed a complaint against the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange, Binance, and its CEO, Changpeng Zhao, among others, alleging that they had run an unregistered exchange and deliberately failed to establish adequate anti-money laundering and other compliance protocols. The case alleges that Binance and its associates offered a range of financial products, such as cryptocurrency futures and options to earn significant profits while knowingly flouting U.S. anti-money laundering, anti-fraud, and wider compliance laws. Responding to the CFTC claims on Twitter, Zhao argued that it contained an incomplete recitation of facts. It is the second time the SEC has accused Zhao of misleading regulators after he relocated Binance head office multiple times. The case marks the latest round in the global regulatory push against cryptocurrency exchanges and brokers worldwide. However, Binance was not the only cryptocurrency firm to receive regulatory warnings recently. The UK subsidiary of digital currency exchange BitMEX, a peer of Binance, lost approval for its trading operations from the UK's Financial Conduct Authority, FCA, after it emerged that the firm breached money laundering regulations. Meanwhile, Gate.io, a smaller U.S. cryptocurrency exchange platform, has been placed on the Ontario Securities Commission's list of unregistered products. Its mobile app is reportedly still available for download on Android and iOS despite this. Such regulatory interventions form part of a broader effort to improve cryptocurrency regulation and protect naive investors who are lured by fevered asset price speculation. Hong Kong to host global advisors for China's 1.35 trillion US dollar wealth fund. South China Morning Post. China Investment Corp, CIC, the Chinese state-owned sovereign wealth fund, is set to host its International Advisory Council meeting in Hong Kong later this year, marking the first time the group has met outside of mainland China since it was established 14 years ago. The Council is expected to share insights on geopolitical and macroeconomic topics during the event and analyze global market conditions. The summit has the backing of the Hong Kong and Macau Affairs Office, with officials expected to provide necessary help, including liaising with other ministries. The CIC also plans to hold its Global Investment Forum in Hong Kong, which is expected to attract investment bankers and asset management firms. U.S. and Japan reach deal on battery minerals. New York Times The U.S. and Japan have agreed on supplies of minerals used to manufacture car batteries. Expectations are that this deal will resolve a contentious issue in the relationship between the two countries and could be a model for resolving similar disputes with other trading partners. 
The scope of the agreement might be limited, but the Biden administration has promoted it as the beginning of a new framework. The U.S. and Japan hope to build a deeper relationship with like-minded countries to develop more stable supply chains for electric vehicles that do not rely heavily on China. The Biden administration believes China's dominance of the global car battery industry, including the processing of the minerals needed to make the batteries, leaves the U.S. highly vulnerable. The agreement is centered on the promotion of labor and environmental standards for the minerals that are key to powering electric vehicles, taking accountability for resources efficient use, reviewing investments from foreign entities in the sector, among other pledges. Under the Biden administration's Inflation Reduction Act, however, some of the allies were excluded from its benefits, leading to disagreements. The U.S. Treasury Department is expected to issue a proposed rule clarifying the law's provisions, which offer tax incentives for electric vehicles built in North America, or source the material for their batteries from the U.S. or countries with which the U.S. has a free trade agreement. This move would put to bed disagreements with Japan and work towards cementing ties with EU allies who claim that the legislation will disadvantage their companies and lure investment away from them. Subscribe. The book Xi Jinping, The World's Most Powerful Man and His Subordinates offers a comprehensive analysis of Xi Jinping's power structure, delving into his consolidation of control over the Communist Party of China, the military, and the economy and exploring the systemic changes he has implemented. The book provides a detailed account of the personnel layout of the Communist Party of China's Central Political Bureau and the Central Secretariat, focusing on the 26 individuals who hold the most powerful and important positions in China, and provides readers with a clear understanding of the direction of high-level politics in China's future. The book is available on Amazon in Kindle ebook and paperback formats and in multiple languages. Stay informed about the latest news, analysis, and policy briefs from across the globe related to China with the China Brief. Our team aggregates, synthesizes, and summarizes the most critical information from various sources, including media outlets, think tanks, government agencies, and industry experts. Our mission is to provide easily accessible and critically valuable information tailored to your specific field of interest. We understand the significance of staying up to date on developments related to China and aim to make this information understandable for our readers. Join the conversation and stay informed about the latest news and developments related to China by visiting our website at http://6do.world.